Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss the header field of TCP segment. So whenever we use any application program like email or web page, then then app, then that application program actually generates the data, which data is handed over to the transport layer after being converted into binary form. So zeros and ones are the binary forms. An application program generates the data and that data is handed over to the transport layer. So application program continuously generates the data and hands over to the transport layer using presentation and session layer. And at the transport layer, actually, the transport layer breaks up that data into, into parts of eight bits so in, in, in bytes and takes byte by byte that data and forms the data like this. So it, the transport layer takes the data generated by the application layer and makes uh, the data, makes the byte of the data and puts those bytes into the data part. And it adds header on top of that data and we call that a segment. So the combination of data and the header part is called the segment. And segmentation helps multiple application programs to use the network at the same time. It means at the same time, we can use the email, we can use the web pages, we can use the video streaming. So multiple application programs can be can be using the the, the network at the same time because of the segment. Otherwise, if we could not have provided the facility of segmentation that only one application would have been allowed to use the network at one time. So in the same way, again, the application program generates the data and this data is handed over to the transport layer and the transport layer uh, puts that data byte wise into the data part of the segment and it adds header on top of that and we call it a segment. Now, today we are going to discuss actually uh, the header part of this segment, that what is inside of this TCP header. And the size of this TCP header is, is actually from 20 bytes to 20 to 60 bytes. So this will be the size of this TCP header. And this header has, has got many fields to support the data communication between uh, the nodes or between the transport layers. So if very first, we are going to discuss the source port address and the destination port address. As we discussed, uh, at a node which is connected with the internet, we might be using multiple application programs like instant messaging, like uh, video streaming, or like multiple web pages, and they might be communicating with other application programs at the remote node. Uh, the di the, to differentiate between those application programs, you see, so the multiple application programs are using and they'll be using with multi, they'll be communicating with multiple application program at a remote node. Now to differentiate between the application program, uh, a, a specific uh, a identifier is used. That identifier is called the port number. So one port number at the source node and one port number at the destination node. So this is the source port and the destination port, which is used to differentiate among multiple application programs. So these all will have a port number and port numbers actually identify the different application programs on, on two nodes. So these are source port uh, address and the destination ports address and these are 16 bits. And uh, and some well, well known uh, port numbers are given here. For example, here, if you are using some HTTP program then the port number used by the server will be 80. And the port number for Telnet, for example, if we want to get connected with some uh, uh, remote applications, then we use Telnet. And then FTP, when we want to transfer some files, then the port number for that application is TCP. And then let's move to the next 
uh, next field of this TCP header that is sequence number. So sequence number actually when we transmit the data segment from one node to another or from client to server, then these, uh, these data segments are sent from one, one node to the another, but they may arrive at the destination by following different paths. So there may be multiple paths from source to destination. If they are, if they are following different paths, then they may arrive at, uh, at different, different timing. So, we put sequence number on each each byte of the segment. So when this is received at the destination, the destination should provide us some some acknowledgement. So sequence number is a number assigned to each byte to be transmitted by the sending node. And then the acknowledgement field, the acknowledgement field or the acknowledgement number is a number sent by the receiving node. And that node is that acknowledgement number is calculated by adding one to the sequence number sent by this 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 transmitting node. So in this in this case, the sending node send a sequence number any for example 100, and this this destination node sends back an acknowledgement, and that acknowledgement will be this sequence number that is 100, 100 and plus one, so that will be 100. One, so this destination node will forward uh, uh, 101 in the acknowledgement field to the to the to the sender that now I expect the the byte number of 101. So this is how acknowledgement uh, number works, and for that this field this egg field is set one, and you set the acknowledgement number back to the uh, client. After that, we have these uh, these six one bit one bit fields. So these all these all fields have only value of one bit. So they can be zero or one. So these are six. These are called six bit fields. Are they are they are also called flags. So the very first flag fin. This indicates there is no data. There is no more data from the sender. So sender and destination, and it indicates that. Now I have completed the transmission of the data and I don't have more data to, to be sent. And then SYN, SYN field is there to synchronize the initial sequence. So when uh, I have a second video for the three-way handshake, in three-way handshake we send some initial sequence number to, to the server machines that I, am, I want to transmit some data. And at that time we put or we set this SYN SYN Field our flag and send the sequence number. Reset. So reset is a flag. If if this is set, then it initiates to 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 reset the connection. For example, resend. No, but this is sorry. Reset the connection. So this is used to reset the connection. This is uh, re reset the connection. And then is push. This PSH push is used to push the data to the receiving application. So, so, so this, the data is waiting for that, and then push. When when the push flag is set, then you push that data to the receiving application. Acknowledgement, as we discussed in the previous slide, acknowledgement field. This ACK field when when is set. This indicates that acknowledgement field is significant. Then look it, it means then look into the acknowledgement number. This is significant. Urgent. This URG urgent field indicates that 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 the that, 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 uh, data which is pointed by the urgent pointer that has this has some significance. You see, when you said put value of one in this field, now it, it shows that now you need we need to give importance to this part or this field of the header of the TCP segment. Now let's move to the window size. This is really important. Uh, all fields are important, but if, but the size window size field indicates the number of bytes the receiver node is willing to receive. 
so you see the receiving node has some 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 uh, memory receiving node has some memory uh, and there is also also some capability of the medium between the transmitting and the receiving node so if you are sending too much data at one time then the receiver will be overwhelmed and this will not be able to process all the bytes at the same time so what we do we set the size of the window which tells that the the, the maximum number of bytes a receiving a receiver nodes is to willing to receive without any loss so it is actually used to to flow control the data then is urgent pointer this urgent pointer actually indicates uh, uh, where exactly is the end of the urgent data. So when you send a data which is really urgent, then you set the urgent bit over here, and then <coughs> this urgent bit, sorry, this urgent bit when this is one, it indicates that you, we need to get, give significance to this part, and this part actually indicates that where is the end of the actual urgent data checksum so the checksum field is used in the data link layer as well this is there to help check the errors which may have occurred during the transmission from one point to another so from 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 the client to the server machine if there are some errors then checksum field is there to help us find out those errors there are some reserved bits. These are those bits are for uh, future use, and they are uh, they are always set to zero. H length. This is the header length, and this specifies the size of the TCP header in 32-bit words. So we saw that the size of the TCP header is from 20 uh, bytes to 60 bytes, and this size of header length is provided in 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 uh, in 32 bit words and the minimum is 5 words and maximum is 15 words so one word is equal to 32 bits so minimum 5 multiplied by 32 that will be 25 and you can calculate the maximum uh, byte for the tcp header from this and finally we have the fields of options and padding so we are sending we can the segment continuously from source to destination and there are some options which help us to to limit uh, the size of the segment so there uh, there are some options in this field by which we can control the maximum size of the of, of the segment so this field indicates how large the segment can be during transmission so there are many options just i'm going to discuss only two maximum segment size and time stamps so the time stamp in this field the time stamp time stamp shows the maximum time ascending node waits before retransmission so what happened as we discussed in in our previous slide that when a client sends to the server and then the server after receiving those segments sends an acknowledgement back to the client and if the and then client has to wait for some some for certain time for the acknowledgement to be received from the server and if the acknowledgement is not received then we have to set some some certain time that is called the time stamp and after that time the client will assume that the data was not received at the destination and it will resend the uh, segments to the server And finally, these padding paddings are extra zero bits that are added to the header to make the size of the header an even multiple of 32 bits. You see, we need the header to be even multiple of 32 bits. So these 32 bits, 32 bits, 32 bits. For example, by make, when we are making this header part of 32 bits, we may be missing some of the bits. It means whatever fields we needed we have provided all of the fields but still this this 32 this the the minimum size of the ip um, uh, tcp segment header is not being 32 bits then 
multiple of 32 bits, then we can add extra zero, zeros and zeros to fill it up to the minimum of 20 bytes. So, and to, to, to be minimum of multiple of 32 bits. So 32 bits, 32 bits and 32 bits in some of there. If we miss some of the bits, then we put extra zeros there and we make it 32 bits, multiple of 32 bits. So this is the role of pairing. So these are simply the extra bits added in the TCP segment header. Yes, so that was, that was all for today. And uh, thank you for, for your timings. And I hope you got something in today's